Now we will move to the uh, homework exercises, okay? So for the homework exercises, um, we have selected uh, one example that is that comes from the motif uh, sparse linear algebra, and that is essentially the transpose the multiplication of the transposed a transposed matrix by a vector. So you just need to know that this is a sparse algebra, matrix by vector. Instead of using dense matrices or dense arrays that is, that store all the elements, you are using a sparse storages where the only the non-zero elements are stored in the, in the program. So you can see here in this slide that this A matrix that has zero and non-zero elements using the CRS compressed row storage format, you can store only the values that are different from zero and you use uh, an auxiliary arrays to store the column indices and the row indices so that you can recover the original position in the tense array. Okay, so with this uh, sparse linear algebra example, AT max, if you remember, it's one of the examples we started with uh, at the beginning of today. In terms of motif, it is uh, sparse linear algebra. In terms of compute patterns, it has a for all pattern and a sparse reduction pattern. And it's very simple. It's just one invocation of this AT max routine. So you can see the code here. Um, as this relates to these code patterns that were introduced in the training series of 2019, here you have a, a link to the video to watch deeper explanations about these patterns and how to parallelize them, as well as the PDF slides where uh, additional information is available for you to understand in detail how to execute these two code, two code patterns in parallel. So for now, I'm just um, duplicating some information here for your convenience. That is the for all uh, pattern is essentially a code where you have a loop where you don't have dependencies between the, the loop, the loop iteration. So in the very naive example is just computing the different elements of an array by copying from corresponding positions in a different array. But this is just a representative, the simpler, simplest example that we can write and we can code. And how to parallelize this? This is identified by parallel where as a for all pattern that offers an opportunity for parallelization that can be parallelized just adding typically pragma moment P parallel four or pragma ECC parallel loop. Okay, just summarizing many details that you have in the materials of the 2019 series. For the scalar reduction, you have already seen this with the pi example. You're just accumulating on one single element all the elements of an array, for instance. This is simple, but it's a representative of pi computation and representative of many other, for instance, Monte Carlo simulations that in the end summarize many elements in one single output, okay? And here you have three strategies for parallelization for this scalar reduction opportunity. And you have seen the three of them in the demonstration uh, that Javier uh, conducted uh, today. Finally, a sparse reduction. Why we focus on this? Because in programming languages, in uh, OpenMP, OpenACC application program interfaces, you have built-in support for scalar reductions, but you don't have built-in support for this type of reductions that we call sparse. Sparse in the sense that at compile time, you don't know in what element of array of the output array A will be, uh, we, the code will perform the accumulation. Sparse in the sense that you don't know this information. So you cannot know at compile time what elements will be updated. This is typical from molecular simulations where you have a molecule and you know what other molecules this molecule interacts with. And you code your application by storing an array the set of molecules that interact with this molecule. This is where the sparse nature comes from. Or typically finite elements. You traverse the domain by finite elements, and in, for each element, you have the coordinates of the nodes of the mesh where the element accumulates to the result. Again, these coordinates are usually stored in auxiliary arrays. So this sparse reduction appears in molecular dynamics, finite difference, finite volumes, finite elements, 
very well known numerical uh, uh, approximation uh, techniques used in our simulation sim scientific goals. And now in OpenMP, OpenMC, you have support for using defined uh, reductions where you can somehow code in a different way sparse reductions, but you don't have the built-in support in the OpenMP or OpenMC standards. So as you will see uh, in your homework, you have two uh, strategies for this. Paralyze it with atomic, paralyze it with explicit privatization. So if you remember, we said that for its pattern, for its platform setup, multi-threading and CPU, offloading and GPU, you have different parallelization strategies available. So we are focusing now on sparse reduction. And you have the sparse reduction available on CPU with the two stra these strategies, but on the GPU, you can only execute the atomic implementation because the other one requires thread private arrays that are usually very large and in the GPU, you can run easily run out of memory or the code just will fail, okay? So these are, this is how the code will look like with the different strategies, making, protecting the sparse reduction with atomic update or allocating thread private auxiliary arrays and reducing all the thread private arrays into the single final array. So you will see in the guided step-by-step -step homework how you can do this with trainer and with directives. So what do we suggest as homework, primary homework? Follow the step-by-step -step guide of this quick start guide. So here you can see that the quick start guide will guide you through different steps, downloading the examples, going through the different tools of analyzer, report, check, loops, and directives to finally uh, use the trainer tool to do this, a similar work whenever that is possible, okay? So um, this is the first homework. We estimate doing this once you get used to trainer and analyzer, it can take you, let's say two, three hours. That is what we think might be reasonable if you are first it's your first experience with the tools. So if you want to um, know more about the different features, we want to point you to the worksheets, detailed worksheets step-by-step step, that we prepared for the training series in 2019. Introductory level works with Pi and Lulesh. And this is working with the three patterns, sparse reduction, for all, and uh, scalar reduction. And this will focus only on the compute side. How can you parallelize computations on the GPU and on the CPU? In the intermediate level, we use the same example codes, Pi and Lulis MK. But in this case, you will see how to move to the GPU to accelerate the code. If I remember well, we obtain kind of more or less a 6x speed up for Lulis MK on GPUs in October. So follow this step by step if you want to go no more and you want to invest more time in all the tools and how to benefit from all of these um, tools and all of the concept of the pillar of the catalog, the effect recommendations, the opportunities and the palestation opportunities based on this pattern-based approach. Okay, so they are guided. They are step-by-step. Step. So feel free to download them, read them and go step-by-step step on Cori or if you have any issue on your, on your laptop. Preferably use the Cori setup because you have access to all the compilers, all the software setup is already pre-installed for you, especially for GPU. And this can be, can save a lot of time on your side to prepare the software setup, software stack in your computers. So suggestion is to do it on Cori. So quick start guide of ATMAX, sparse reduction, plus the homework of the worksheets of the training series 2019, the introductory level, and the intermediate level uh, courses. Okay, so I have tried to go very fast uh, over this part to have some uh, time for Q&A. Just tell you that everything you do here, next week you will apply it to, C, to CPIC example, where again, you will be addressing the parallelization of sparse reduction 
of for all of scalar reductions, all of them combined in a different manner. And we want to uh, discuss and present why and how the sparse reductions that you find in CPIC particle in cell method, LUL SMK finite elements, and ATMAX sparse linear algebra, what do they have in common? How they are different? And how this can impact on the performance that you can expect to obtain from CPU and GPU? Okay, so we are still working on those materials and discussing them internally with uh, NERSC staff. So once they are ready, we will share them with you. But anyway, they will be available for you uh, next week. Then we have a question by Liubi, Liubin Shu for the parallel, for, for the defect and protected multi-threading recurrence. Is that summation just serial? Okay, that's a, a good question. Um, we started to provide support for the patterns for all a scalar reduction and a sparse reduction because they are widely used in real applications. And recurrences is also widely used in parts of, of, of applications. So recurrences means that you have a loop with iterations, dependencies between different iterations. So in particular, depending on what dependencies are introduced between what iterations, you have different types of recurrences that can be parallelized. The parallelization is not as, as straightforward as a for all pattern where you just add fragment and p parallel for. It's not as straightforward as a reduction where you can, scalar reduction where you can add fragment and p parallel for reduction plus the name of the variable. You, you need to do something else. So you need kind of orchestrate different waves for the threads to synchronize so that after several steps, they can provide you with the correct result. So for instance, the example code that we showed in this slide is uh, an example of a recurrence that can be executed using a parallel prefix operation. Okay, so let me go back to the, uh, probably this one is what you're referring to, PWD007. In this case, you have one dependence between the other with the previous application and at the end, what you have is the accumulation of all the elements of the array in the last iteration element of the array. But in the middle, you have all the partial sums. So there are different ways of computing this, but this is known as parallel prefix or parallel suffix operation. So in general, the, question, the answer to the question is for recurrences, in the future, we will typify different subtypes of recurrences and we will provide additional uh, parallelization strategies for these different subtypes, particularly for parallel prefix operations. Okay, so I hope I have answered that uh, question by Liu Bing Xu. Rob Egan, how can this, I understand the whole approach, account for the startup overhead of initializing this GPU. Uh, I don't know exactly what you're thinking in, but in general, when you benchmark your code on the GPU, the first run you do in the GPU usually has a lot of initializ initialization overhead as behind the scenes, the code is somehow, for the first time, whenever, whenever you bought the first time, you, it is precompiled for the GPU hardware. And this, this is done typically once and then reused. So when you benchmark applications and you see the benchmarking, what people usually does is uses a methodology to benchmark. You run the application and measure different run times of the application and you discard the worst case and better uh, case run times. And you typically made, for instance, the mean the, the average of the remaining time measurements. Okay, assuming that checking that you have a slow, a, a low statistical deviation for the results. Okay, so I think that that can be handled with an appropriate benchmarking and time measuring 
methodology. I don't know if it is exactly what you have in mind with this question. I hope I understood the question well. The next question is by Hugo Slepika. Can the command line interface tools be used on cloud-based continuous integration, continuous delivery tools, such as Travis, Azure Pipelines, Circle, CI, etc. Well, so far, we have been uh, testing the tools from Jenkins. We have not checked uh, uh, cloud-based CI CD tools, but we have been taking a look at other tools similar to Analyzer, professional tools to guarantee that code is compliant with a given uh, coding standard for cybersecurity or for functional safety in the automotive industry, just to give you an example. And the Parallel Analyzer tool is designed with command line tools and flags similar to those tools. So we expect that these, our tools can be integrated uh, into this cloud-based continuous integration, continuous delivery frameworks, but we don't have a still first-hand experience with them. And finally, by Lupon question by Meng Jiao Huang, is there any optimization tool for MPI also? If by optimization tool, you mean uh, a tool that is capable, capable of analyzing the source code of your MPI communications and check if it is compliant with best practice recommendations for MPI coding. If you mean that part of our capabilities of compliance defects and recommendations for MPI code, I am not aware of that, but we have not really explored in detail what tools are available for MPI. I know that there are some tools based on Clang that uh, implement MPI checkers. So probably those two tools might help you in that direction. Regarding optimizing MPI code by making it hybrid, parallel tools can be used in that, in that, in that, for that purpose. That is, within one MPI rank, you can focus on single-threaded code for the MPI rank and try to discover opportunities and parallelize them to make your code hybrid, combining OpenMP and OpenACC. I think that's what comes to my mind when I read your question. I hope that it is what you had in mind. Thank you. Thank you very much to everybody and uh, really a pleasure to have you here today.